Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I really do mean good evening because we are, it's nearly 20 past uh, 10 at night here yeah, this Thursday evening, and we return to, well, unfortunately, this is like, they refer to this as like, well, this is just Chris's glasses, but the quickie tends to call them, well, yeah, and because it's just, I, I, I'm sorry about that. So let's just, this is going to be very brief, uh, but... Unlike Chris's dirty cramp briefs, this is like more of the things that you can't really say it's too much. It's just, but with everything else that Chris touches and does, he somehow, somehow manages to place his own little goofy little uh, senses on these sorts of things. My frames are good. They look good to me and they fit the, and they are the best fit for my lenses anyway. And uh, Sonichu on his glasses. I think I've picked the wrong frames. Uh, good lord, like, it's, D good lord, uh, my frames make me look very hot. Are you sure about that? Are you sure about the fact that your arm, like, Rose Chu's arms have no dimension? Her legs look disproportionately uh, off kilter. Her feet somehow nearly go all the, these are Wellington boots, these aren't actual shoes. But, yeah, you know what, you do you, uh, Rose Chew. Literally. The glasses is the colloquial name for Chris's classic aviator spectacles, the appearance of which has been described as recalling some form of sexual deviance such as a pedo fork. Chris claims in his diary that he began wearing glasses on the 2nd of February 1998, so, interesting enough, that was three days after I was born. Hmm. Because of nearsightedness. He was diagnosed by his orthopologist, half-brother David Annan Chandler, not long after he had an altercation with a black kid on the school bus and his glasses were knocked off his face and possibly broken, depending on the version of the story. Confusingly, well, this might have been one of those very few times where Chris, uh, getting into an... Well, I, it's hard to say, like, who started uh, the problem with the fight on the bus, but I'm... So I can't really say if it was Chris's fault or not, but I don't know, you be the judge. Confusingly, Chris has stated that the bus incident occurred during the fre his freshman year of high school from 96 to 97. If true, this suggests that the date in his diary is probably wrong and that he really began wearing glasses in February of 97. The classic frames which Chris uh, was wearing at the time of his discovery were double bridged to reduce damage induced by fits of tarred rage, and somewhat oversized, their roundness emphasising Chris's pudgy face and generally routed form, or rotund form I should say. He got them at Walmart. The earpieces were connected by a string attachment that nobody else under the age of 60 would use. <laughs> Maybe he, maybe Chris just thought they looked cool or more practical, perhaps. Because there is a... I don't wear glasses myself, but there is a practicality to some things. Although, if we are going to be used, talking about eyewear, then I may as well um, introduce guys to basically my staple. Which, even if I just, like... Like, the reason why I just, like, I use these is outside of the fact that there's, like, a... I've worn these for so long. It's also good to, like, keep a lot of the harsh lights out when I try and do these sorts of videos. So, uh, what do you guys think about these, by the way? Um, let me see if I can actually, like, uh, uh, double it up a little bit about, uh... D did I have this thing, like, locked, or... There we go. I mean, what do you guys reckon? Do you think these things look uh, good on me? I mean, a lot of po a lot of people say they don't, but at the same time, this is sort of my own look, and it's a little bit something that I just sort of, uh, I've just adopted as my own. And I do admit I do prefer like this. Uh, there, there's two versions of these. There's black, and then there's silver. And I do honestly like prefer the silver myself because I think just it's a little bit more to look at and. I just, I kind of, it's a little bit easier to catch, like, a reflection of for some people, and it's, um, I do have, like, other versions of this as well. I have those, like, those anime glasses that are, like, completely white, so you just press a button and they just shine white, so it's a bit like, some, like, that, that one guy out of, uh, uh, Shinji's dad from Neo Genesis Evangelion, and then there's also, 
Uh, what was the uh, the other one that was on my mind? Um, oh yeah, there's like the really big ones where you could like type things on your phone and like a message or an animation would appear on the on the glasses. They're really really cool, but the charge for those is surprisingly woeful. But you know, what? Um, I think I'll just I'll just take these off for now. Let me know if you like those, by the way. I might possibly bring them, pop them back out again. So, uh, uh, maybe it's a little bit, uh, it's the only problem with, like, having to, like, ridge. Okay, so there we are. That's, that, that's about right. Often these types of frames and lenses are among the few cheap pairs available by default to patients if they want to utilize their social his tugboat on vision benefits. Of course, they tend to spend more extra cash on a much less hideous pair of frames. But Chris has better things to buy, which we will get to at some point in the future. Chris thought the glasses looked good on him, calling them respectable frames. He also justified them with the argument that they are the best fit for my lenses anyway, though some stronger prescriptions do require bigger frames to accommodate thicker lenses. Standard uh, prescription spectacles could be ground, to down, ground, be ground down to fit any glasses that Chris desires. Nevertheless, Chris has always been somewhat self-conscious about his glasses. He worried that his needed to see a far distance glasses made it difficult for women to notice his handsome face. I mean, I know they're probably like, you know, maybe just saying that, but I'm I'm not even t entirely sure if that's like the worst. I, I disbelieve that, that claim. He does not wear them for dating profile photos, however. While Chris's little big planet avatar does wear glasses, comic Chris almost never does though no one knows why. It could be that he finds drawing the glasses to be too stressful, or that his self-image is stuck in early 98. Perhaps Chris's idealised self has 2020 vision. Sammy, a more accurate representation of the real Chris than comic Chris, does wear glasses. They aren't pedo glasses, however, though more closely resembling the ones worn by Peter Griffin. In a video uh, diatribe against the trolls, he defensively stammered, I've only nearsighted. I do wear glasses, take it or leave it, losers. It, mm, it helps me see better, see more detail, and more clear vision than any of you knuckleheads can put together, out of your own ego that's so richly consumed of. You tell him, Chris, but... um, Yeah, it's just, again, to be honest, I just... I'm only nearsighted. He, he could have just left that in. I mean, once again, we know that Chris ever tried... That, again, this is something I want people to understand, is that during um, this period of me trying to do YouTube, I have actually had to, like, encounter a fair number of trolls who say, like, really stupid shit uh, to me. But to be honest, guess what? I have never responded to even one comment, and I just... That's, that's, a, that's, that's good enough for me. I don't need to respond to them, and I'd say I'm doing pretty well, but uh, whatever that's worth. I might do an entire separate video about trolling, perhaps, I suppose. In a couple of videos posted in October 2010, it appeared that Chris had wrapped tape over the bridge of his glasses. The tape was later replaced by a more permanent solution in the form of Crayola Model Magic. Yes, that's true, and how exactly his frames became broken is unknown. The moving forward videos show that Chris sometimes stores his glasses in his back pocket, though so it's not entirely unlikely they simply forgot where they were and sat on them by accident. The Tongo pictures indicated that by April of 2011, he had gotten a new pair just as cheap as the first ones. Alas, these glasses, which Chris describes as $324 RX lens glasses, were broken by the jerk cops when, was, was, when Chris was arrest, resisting arrest on the 28th of October 2011. Once again, Chris literally... Is that part of like the inheritance that Bob left for him, uh, for Chris and Bob? And Chris just decided just to waste it on... I don't exactly know what RX lens glasses are. In fact, actually, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna actually look into this a little bit.
Are these like any any good? Prescription glasses. Let me see images. These literally just could be. Um... Yeah. The okay. So these are just like prescription glasses. Okay. So maybe Chris actually did. Okay. So maybe that's a little bit more practical and useful. Is that Chris actually decided to actually get some glasses that are actually suitable? Amazingly, in You're Always Pretty, which leaked in February of 2012, Barbara C. wearing Chris's old glasses, clearly indefinable by the blue uh, ma model magic bridge. Hoarders got... Wait a minute, did that... Was that even true? Let me let me check this out. Did, did, did that really happen? I can't quite remember that happening. So, um... I know, yeah, this is the video where they're literally just stopping in, uh... In, like, McDonald's just to, like, have lunch, but... Did, does, oh. oh yeah, Bob absolutely does have, um, and yeah, yeah, the, the less, the less said about, there, the time will come when I do like a full, um, video about Chris and Bob, but yeah, that's like, ill, just ill, ill. In May of 2012, a Facebook profile pic showed that Chris had replaced the glasses with a relatively normal pair. Unfortunately, this improvement was offset by his being a creepy tom girl with awful hair. This seems to have managed to hold on to his pair since into 2015. And yeah, where he sw swaps them out for like My Little Pony glasses. Dramatic glasses removal. Chris has been known to emphatically remove... So basically, all this does is that Chris would just periodically just remove his glasses in a really dramatic way because Chris seems to think that nothing could make his point or make him stand out all the more if he just does something with dramatic gusto. And finally, for what they're worth, this is like the gallery of shots of Chris and his hair. Um, the early appearance uh, in glasses really up close and I suppose all of these ones are what they are but this is probably like the most iconic one where Chris is just sitting or standing as he were room is for some reason extremely dark and Chris what looks like just someone just stuck a lot of um blue tack on his face and his glasses just stay there actually I even, I must even be honest to this point I hadn't even noticed how like outside of how messed up Chris's hair is, but also just how huge his, his actual, the actual lenses are for his glasses. They, that, so I, and, they, and they're not even like that far down the bridge of Chris's nose. So there's, they've got to be some size, I must admit. And of course, for what they are, is that this is just like Chris with, um, wearing My Little Pony, like pink glasses, the sort of things that kids would wear, like at least under like nine years old. And they for, and they almost look as if they're they are they are worn upside down, but I I honestly can't tell. So that's about it. And I suppose just one way, one fun way of ending this off is just this is like Chris dramatically getting his glasses off. So all the trolls have been lying. Yeah, he does this when he has like something really big to say, but as you can tell, it's just. Like this is the one for the uh, the Guru videos. This is the one for um, just stopping Liquid Chris back the, back the hell off, and Chris doing his my little my holding out for a hero. And Chris, I, I like I like how they had to slow this down because for some reason as well, Chris does that like a little shake off as well when these sorts of things happen, and that's basically about it. So. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was basically the entirety of Chris and his history of glasses. I don't really have much else to say apart from this point, apart from the fact that he just decides that cheap or expensive, he has to make people known that they're just by a large a part of his identity somehow by making them look distinctive enough for people to recognize that they belong to him. So there we go. And I can't wait to see all of you guys again in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye for now. Okay, so I am technically, like, lumping these two together because they sort of, like, somewhat fall under, like, the same category for, like, 
uh, eyesight or eye care, I suppose. So I'm going to just, like, um, throw these together. So if you do think there is a little bit of, like, an issue with, like, overly, like, keeping things, like, relatively consistent, well, I just sort of want to, like... Because they're sort of the same, one and the same. So this is regarding Chris's heterochromia. So according to Emily... Chris's eyes are very, very slightly different coloured. It's nothing you would be able to notice unless he fucking points it out to you, or you just happen to notice small details like that. And I kind of see where she's coming from. They are very, very differently. Or according to Casey, he shows me his eyes up close. They both look hazel. They are not different coloured. Heterochromia is a medical condition in which someone's irises are different coloured. There are two kinds, complete and partial. Partial heterochromia involves a colour variation within a single iris, most common in people with hazel eyes. Chris has complete heterochromia, which means one of his eyes is a different colour from the other. Chris claims that although his eyes were originally blue in high school, he contracted pink eye or conjunctivitis in his right eye, and the prescribed eye drops turned it green. His explanation, however, cannot, cannot be true. While some medications can cause heterochromia as a side effect, the simple antibiotic or antihistamine eye drops prescribed for conjunctivitis cannot. It's more likely that his heterochromia was genetically inherited. In school pictures taken while Chris was very young, close examination reveals that his eyes are different colours. And yeah, even, even through here you can see obviously blue and this one is green. Nevertheless, the pink eye story is one, that he, one of his favourites when introducing himself to girls. In 2021, Chris again claimed that young Christopher's eyes were both blue not heterochromia, yet it is also a prominent, hugely exaggerated feature of his comic self, with one eye coloured emerald green and the other a sea blue. In reality, Chris's condition isn't particularly noticeable except upon close examination, and the less kind amongst us might presume that he only plays it up for the want of any other endearing characteristics. According to eyewitnesses, like above, Chris's eyes are indeed differently coloured, but are nothing like the degree Chris describes or draws. Slight heterochromia is in fact fairly common in people of Northern European line lineage, but Chris seems to think that it is exceptionally rare and that he is more special for having it. Um, that's more, that is a little bit more things I can understand why Chris would come up with like this. It's similar to his traits and the way he views autism because unfortunately for reasons I will get to Chris's views on autism it seems to think that at best at the best of times it's well I'll get I'll get into that when we get to it his fictional identical twin sister however Crystal is drawn with two blue eyes instead of sharing his retrochromia the reason for this is presumably because Chris believes his acquired his heterochromia. His evil homoerotic twin, Red Noak Natsu Natsuk, however, is drawn with one red eye and one orange eye. Chris Chan Solitu and Colossal Chan have both have heterochromia. A close examination of Chris's eye seems to indicate that Chris's green eye is actually more of a hazel greenish shade of blue rather than a distinctively green eye that he portrays. It should also be noted that despite the significance that Chris gives to this quirk, he often mistakenly colours his right eye blue and his left eye green in his comics. The reasons for these mistakes are speculated as stemming from his inability to visualise himself, lack of attention while colouring, or inability to discern left from right. Perhaps Chris himself doesn't really notice the difference all that much. Chris has incorporated his heterochromia into the bizarre dualism associated with his name change, asserting that Christopher still lives in me, own in my one blue eye. Now that he's changed his name to Christine, it's anyone guesses where Christian now resides. And again, for reasons I will have to cover when we're covering like the early 2020s regarding Chris that isn't revolved around the 
<clears throat> incident, it would be incredibly uh, hard to go because the the mad the, the roller coaster of madness that happens during this period, very much almost like orchestrated through this picture of Chris here, is so. We'll get to it, and to be honest, the um, the instances where his heterochromia is mentioned is only really mentioned like pretty early into his discovery, as well as things like well, he brought it up on a seventeen-year-old girl he tried to talk up on Facebook. Um, yeah, yeah, and that's just roughly about it. So again, I'm sort of like lumping this in together with the article about Chris and his glasses, only because Chris has to somehow thinks that just having this is enough on its own. It's It all sort of lumps into the idea that Chris's health is, at least for the things that he doesn't absolutely have any control of whatsoever, are just unique quirks and something that makes him incredibly special. And because we know what we think about Chris's narcissism and issues regarding his um, capabilities of actually doing anything like that wouldn't involve stress or anything residing hard work. These things are just easier to gravitate to because they make him look unique and different. Well, unique and different is true, but that's also might be in part of everything else. So, there we have it. And I cannot wait to see all of you guys again in the next video. Take care and bye-bye for now.